Okay, here we're looking at the last subcategory of lipids called phospholipids. This is what one individual uh, phospholipid looks like, and this is a, what we call a phospholipid bilayer, where we see two layers of these phospholipids coming together. Very important for cell membranes. And keep in mind, there's a hydrophobic tail, that's the lipid portion, that's kind of the fat portion I see here. And they can be saturated or unsaturated in a hydrophilic head group, which is the phosphate group. We see a charge here. Uh, it's a phosphate group here, and that's hydrophilic. It likes water. And in the middle here, it dislikes water. So phospholipid in general is a modified fat. It's one of the three fatty acids is replaced by a phosphate in a small polar functional group. So this polar portion is what makes it hydrophilic, meaning it likes water, in comparison to the lipid portion here, the hydrophobic tails. In water, phospholipids aggregate to form a lipid bilayer, as we saw in the previous image, uh, composed of a hydrophilic head and two hydrophobic tails. So while it is highlighted here in nice colors and nice shapes, uh, realize that there is this phosphate group and then two fatty acids. You can recognize the saturated one because it has all single bonds, saturated with hydrogens, keep in mind, and an unsaturated one here where there is a single uh, double bond uh, here, but that still classifies it as unsaturated. And this would be in the cis form here because they'd both be forming on the same side. Continuing on with our phospholipids, it's a major component in cell membranes. As I said, they form a lipid bilayer, which is semi-permeable. What it means to be semi-permeable is we look here, we zoom in on this green area, and we look at one phospholipid here. This semi-permeable cell membrane that's generated in cells means that only certain molecules are able to diffuse across it. So as we see here, for example, a semi-permeable membrane, we see some holes here, uh, allowing the small molecules to go through, but not the larger ones. Now, the cell, as a result, has a lot of proteins here, allowing for signaling, allowing for things to come in and out. Uh, but what's the main kind of barrier here is this phospholipid bilayer component of the cell. Keep in mind, it doesn't prevent anything from getting through, but it is what we call semi-permeable, because only certain molecules can diffuse across through it. Others need these protein carriers uh, and active transport to move them across. Lastly, our phospholipids are a vital function in coating cellular barriers, also aid in movement of vitamins, nu nutrients, and fat-containing molecules throughout the body. Uh, the, the, you see these round portions here, uh, the liposome, if you notice, we have our hydrophilic heads on the outside forming a bilayer and also forming a pocket on the inside. Uh, the cell here is only one layer and we see all the hydrophobic tails pointed on the inside. And these are both forming these kind of spherical uh, shapes. What we commonly see in cells is the bilayer sheet. And this is that bilayer here that's of being semi-permeable, only allowing certain things into and out of the cell. We need protein carriers, as we'll learn about later, to help transport things, but this bilayer acts as a wonderful semi-permeable barrier to the cells, allowing them to control and regulate many of the things coming both into and also leading the cell.